It won't be a driving force. Like, have you heard? You, have you heard of Nietzsche? God is dead. Yeah, and Nietzsche died, and God is alive. And Christianity has not been buried. In fact, in communist China, you know, they killed so many Christians, and within within 50, 60 years, the underground church, there's a hundred million Christians in China. In Iran today, so, wait, Christians so, are persecuted. So in North Korea. What's that? Do you, do you want Nietzsche to be immortal? His work lives on, and I'd say it's more influential than Christianity. Oh yeah, right. Uh, in our modern Nietzsche society. having more influence than than Jesus Christ. What year is it today? Twenty twenty. What happened two thousand twenty two years ago? I couldn't tell you. Jesus Christ was born. So Nietzsche, yeah, he he came, he lived, he died. So, wait, Jesus it, Christ rose about from the dead. When he was born or when he was killed? We care about when he was born and when he rose from the dead. He rose from the dead three days after his death and he offers forgiveness of sins. And you may laugh and say, this is silly. He promised he would. Yeah, well, when, when, it, it, when it's the right time, Jesus Christ will come back and he will judge so, the world in righteousness. So what makes Christianity? There, there's thousands of religions across the world and everybody, there's people like you who believe in them just as strongly. Buddhism, Hinduism, I mean, I even if my examples aren't perfect, there's all of these examples and pe people will die for their religions. And why, what makes Christians better than any other religion when there's so many options to choose from? So it's not a matter of option and it's not a matter of better, it's what is truth. So truth is knowable and I would challenge you that if you look at the Bible, the evidence for the Bible, the archeology span of the Bible, you look for the evidence of um, creation, you look for the evidence of who so Jesus you, is. You, so you think uh, that our world was created 6,000 years ago? No, the Bible actually doesn't say how old the earth is. The Bible just says that God created it. But I, I, and the Hebrew what, word, the Hebrew I, word for day so doesn't... How do you think the earth came about? God, at the moment of creation, God spoke forth everything and all matter came into existence and however long it took is however long it took. Science, you know, you look through a telescope and it's 13 point whatever billion years. Time is a very subjective thing if there's no one there to experience it. The Bible doesn't put a time stamp on the age of the earth. But the Bible does have real places and real archaeology. And not only that, Jesus made claims and even people that weren't Christians acknowledged that he made these claims. So it's not a made-believe fairy tale. It's a historical event. Jesus Christ really claimed to be the Savior of the world and the Son of God and his disciples. All of them, except one, went to torturous deaths because they would not deny that he had risen from the dead. So many people would die for something they believe to be true, even though it may be false. No one is going to die a torturous death for something they know is false. So you say, what's cr different between Christianity and other religions? You see, Christianity is a faith in God and receiving his grace. Other religion is people trying to work their way to God. In Catholicism, you got to work your way to God. In Islam, you got to work your way to God. In Hinduism, it's karma. And you got to keep working and working and working. Christianity is being humble enough to say, God, I need you to save me. Will you save me? And God says, I have made a way for you to be saved apart from your works, but through my grace. And that's that's the beauty of it, that it's totally different than religion. So, it's one based on love, not based on, on condemnation. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that God gave so that we could be forgiven, that if you believe in him, you're not condemned. And that the issue is that if you don't believe, you're already under condemnation because your own heart condemns you. You know you've sinned. And you, you know you've sinned so much that you're trying to say that sin isn't wrong anymore, and that's a dangerous place. No, no, no I don't think that, I think that's so silly. Why is it silly? It's <laughs> what? How old are you? How old are you? No, we had to go here. Well, I paid tax dollars for you guys to get your Pell Grants. <laughs> it's true. I pay my taxes. It's not harassment, it's discussion. You're at a public institution of dialogue, and this is an opportunity for Spirituality 101. Class. Well, right, right here, and when you're when in public places, you're allowed to dialogue. It's not harassment. You see, you're mis misdefining the word. Harassment is being mean. Harassment is me coming up in your space. This is just talking. You don't do that, no, I don't. No, no one harassed you. I don't know. Maybe you're thinking of somebody. Yes. No, we didn't. I don't know what group you're thinking about, but we didn't follow you to class. You're making stuff up. You're probably lying right now to try to get clout amongst people, but. Why do we have clout? I 
Because I can tell you nobody followed you into your class because we're not a big group and no one here follows people. No one's here harassing. We're here preaching Jesus. We're preaching Jesus Christ. Because she, because she's not being honest. It's not harassment. Yeah, it's not harassment. Thank you. But anyway, just hey, I appreciate your comment. But okay, <laughs> sins, ob objective morals from the Bible. Like if I, if I lie and I feel guilty, I feel guilty because I know that the lie that I told was wrong. But if I lie for a purpose and I know and I know that the lie is serving a greater purpose, then I don't feel guilty because I know what my lie was doing and I know myself. And I don't need to listen to some book to tell me how to believe. When in reality, look, like if you think there's an objective moral belief, say it on the mic so everyone can hear. That way, if you think there's an objective moral belief, it's still your subjective choice to believe in the objective moral belief. You can't, you can't get around subjectivity in this sense. Like somebody could create a Christian religion that has terrible morals, and people could still follow it, and then they would still argue for some whatever set of objective morals, and these morals would have terrible consequences, and people like you could sit up and sit up here and argue them, and say that there's objective morals like when you when you keep some when you save someone's life, it's bad. You know, like and so hey, and the, that's so that's a good argument. I'm not saying that's not that's not a that's not a dumb argument. But the challenge I would tell you is that we're not basing it on our subjectivity. We're basing it on what Jesus Christ said in the Bible. So, for example, I'm not basing it on my life or my perceptions. I'm basing it on what He said. So, for example, if Jesus really rose from the dead and He really is the Savior of the world, then that means that His words have more authority than me and you. Because yeah, but I don't think that happens. So why would I care? Why? Like, there's no there's no mechanism that that I could see that takes place that result that results in the Christian faith being real. Like I don't see any mechanism for why God would exist. There's there's no part of the universe that you need a Christian God to explain for. It's just unnecessary. Well, I would disagree. A lot of scientists, even a lot of astrophysicists I, I and a lot of astronomers all acknowledge that there is intelligence. There's intelligence. There's an appeal to authority. So just because the scientist believes it, there's some scientists who don't believe it. So if I does that building have a architect or not? Look, when you say, Does that building have an architect? That, that's irrelevant. That's, Why? Because you have character. more complexity than that building, and you're going to say that you came here by chance or random chance. So I'm saying it takes more blind faith to believe there is no God than to believe that there's intelligence behind the universe. You pull out your phone, which works on intelligence. It's programming. Your body works you're way more than that. You're conflating the definition of intelligence. You don't, you, you, I don't think you could even provide a definition of what nowhere, means. Nowhere in nature do we see intelligence coming from chaos? We see intelligence beginning chaos. I mean, intelligence we, beginning we can, intelligence. We can model how all of life evolved on Earth from, from simplistic forms getting increasingly complex. And you can have simple building blocks that result in fascinating... Like you can it takes have, more faith to believe that because when you look at the Cambrian explosion, you have all these... All so these uh, si single-celled organisms, no, and then take, out of nowhere, there's all of this advanced life. The reason, so the reason it doesn't take more faith is because you have to have faith that God existed, and then God created all of this. And so, like, you have to take an extra step to believe in Christianity. Where yeah, I'm you saying you have to take ten extra steps to believe there is no God. You don't. The reason you don't is because you're just saying God existed, and then all of this followed because of His creation. When you could just subtract them out, and nothing changes. I disagree. When you look at a Van Gogh. It has, it has a signature on the bottom and it has beauty to it. And that means that there's somebody that painted it. The beauty is a part of your, sub, the beauty is part of your subjective human experience. If you look out into the world and say, there's, I see beauty, there must be, there must be a reason that there's beauty. You're the architect of beauty in your own mind. And it's not coming from God, it's coming from you. The same way God came from people because God is invented by humans to, to explain life and make sense of it. And it's, we don't need it anymore. That's actually false. I, ha I have to tell you, my friend, it's, it's false. God wasn't invented by humans. God created humans and he gave us a free will because God is relational. You see, you're a person. Your life has value. Your life matters. You're not just a bag of skin and bones and pus and blood. No, you have a spirit and your consciousness, who you are, will one day appear before God and you'll have to give an account for what you did with the life that he allowed you to live. If you reject him, the Bible oh, says God honors in, your free will. Just one second. Grade. God honors your free will. So if you don't want him, the consequences are hell. If you 
receive his grace. God promises no matter what you've done, no matter how far away you've been, he'll forgive you. But so you're in third grade and what happened? <laughs> I, I already know what you're going to say. I think I need to get lunch. It's fine. It's, it's, it's okay. Nice hey, chat. it was good talking to you. I appreciate your questions. What's your question? 